What's up, guys? I'll tell you what's up. Do you know what today is? Of course you don't, because you're all a bunch of ignoramuses. Today is the 10th anniversary of the original airing of Adult Swim. All kids out of the pool for Adult Swim. All kids out! Yes, for many of us, Adult Swim was our first introduction to more mature anime. Up until it came around, most of us had been watching Pokemon, Digimon, Dragon Ball Z, and Yu-Gi-Oh! Then Adult Swim comes around and shows us cartoons that we had no idea could have ever existed. They were dark, gritty, most of them revolved around actual adult characters instead of a twerp whose voice had been mysteriously getting higher instead of lower as time progressed. And we freaking loved every moment of this new frontier. We would stay up late and watch these shows, always looking towards our doors thinking that if we got caught watching them we'd get in trouble. In recent years, anime has taken a back seat on Adult Swim for more underground comedy shows like Venture Brothers, Metalocalypse, and Aqua Teen Hunger Force. I'd be lying if I said those shows aren't great too, but for me, Adult Swim will always be remembered as my haven for more mature anime programming. So, to honor Adult Swim for bringing my anime viewing onto a whole different level, this month is going to be Adult Swim Anime Mash Month! Yeah, try saying that five times fast. Let's start off with one of the more obscure titles in the initial Adult Swim anime lineup, Pilot Candidate, aka Candidate for Goddess. Goddess is a manga written and illustrated by Yukiru Sugisaki, who many of you may know as the author and illustrator for Dian Angel. The story is set in the distant future, where mankind has become limited to living on a few space colonies and the last humanly hospitable planet called Zion. However, a hostile alien race known only as Victim has set their sights on destroying Zion. To counter this, humanity has created the five Ingrids, aka goddesses, to fight against Victim. New recruits are brought in from all over to train at the Space Academy Goa to become future pilots of the goddesses. These giant humanoid fighting robots are mankind's last and only line of defense against the invaders, and should they fail, the last planet humans can possibly live on will be destroyed. So how does this melodramatic space bullshit begin? Let's find out. In the year 4084 AD, humanity brought upon itself a planetary crisis where many planets were destroyed. Zion, the only remaining planet, had to be protected by humanity from the alien species known as Victim until the Day of Hope. Stop! I'm already confused. Humanity brought upon itself a crisis in which many planets were destroyed? Oops! What exactly did they do that was so horrible that entire planets were destroyed? <laughs> oh, it's never explained. Alrighty then. Another question. What exactly is this day of hope that they're holding out for? I mean, they're fighting this galactic war to protect the last known planet that they can survive on, all just for this one day where something is supposed to- Well anyway, pretty quickly the show throws the five goddesses right into our face as they fight off a bad CGI space bug. We then cut to a ship lazily listing its way through space, and we see our main character, Zero Enna, observing Zion. And right away, you're probably going to notice the first problem with this show. Awesome! It's awesome! Awesome! So this is Zion? It's a star! A star! The dialogue... sucks. I mean, it is really bad. And on top of all that, it's a dub... TITLE! A DUB! TITLE! That means the only reason to watch it in Japanese is to not have to hear the god-awful voice acting! Which is a completely legitimate reason! This is the very first time I've been off my own colony. I'm glad you're enthusiastic. Give me a break, at least I stopped barfing. Barfing? Immediately after we went into space, I got nauseous. Hey. 
You mean you have space sickness? Wait a second. That wasn't in your data file. And here is the second problem with this show. The characters are stupid. I mean, you're enlisting him to be the pilot of a giant robot that fights in space and you don't know that he gets nauseous when he goes into space? That's like appointing a Klansman to be the director of an immigration protest rally! You do not want to do that! So whatever, Zero and their instructor have some stupid scene together when Candidate 87 Sasuke Ochiha, I mean, he gooner, decides to step outside. Which we see is pointless since Zero just follows him out anyway and they have their semi-homoerotic trip and fall scene together. This is also where we see what it is that qualifies these kids to be candidates for the goddess. Some sort of split second Super Saiyan ripoff thingy. Ah! appearing in front of me when the hell has he ever suddenly appeared in front of you get used to this i'm gonna be yelling at this show stupidity a lot how uncool how pitiful so they have some more shit dialogue and then they finally arrive at their destination floating in the vast darkness of space exists the pilot training academy goa with an admission of 3,000, the young from various colonies come here with hopes of becoming candidates for pilots. Here they will be drilled and trained to gain experience and technique to fight the enemy and save Zion. We're gonna spend two whole years here, and we'll become pilots! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Hey, back off with that thing, buddy! I don't swing that way! It's my dream! To be in the white goddess and engage in battle. So we cut to see that the five goddesses have arrived at Goa for their routine annual maintenance checks. We're also introduced to the five pilots. And believe me when I say that the ones who actually have the balls to speak their painful dialogue are just as irritating as the candidates. It's the same old story. But why is it that your conversations are always so depressing? It embarrasses me that I have to listen to your poetic nonsense! Uh, wait, wait, Kalu! You! Why don't you ever speak to Ernest when he is talking to you? You're always so silent. It's getting on my nerves. Even today, you blasted away an enemy in my sector. Why don't you speak up? You are a douchebag. Kalu, can't oh. you hear? Huh? Something's a little off with Rena's condition. Her outside parts are all right, but the insides are not really up to speed. I'm going to keep readjusting it, so why don't you come back later, okay? Yeah, yeah. Come on, let's go. Yes! You who I nearly shoved off the scaffolding! And you who I just bitched out at now! Let's go, friends! Next, we cut to the exposition chamber, where two silhouettes are discussing some bullshit about how piloting the goddesses puts the pilots' lives in jeopardy by draining their life force or something like that. Who, whatever, who cares? We then see Zero going through the decontamination process and then proceeding on his way to the candidate's admission ceremony. And they even mark me with this. This is virtually a prison. I wonder if I can hack this. Oh, well that's good. It's nice to know that the fate of humanity rests in the hands of a little shit tinkler who becomes discouraged because of a little change of wardrobe and a fucking haircut! So he gets lost during his rambling and somehow ends up in the goddess's hangar. When he passes by the blue goddess, it apparently reacts to him and opens up to allow him entry. The repair bitch comes around and knocks him into the cockpit. Inside, the goddess begins to connect with him. All nerve relay systems ready to connect. Connecting? I'm the pilot? Ah, this is worse than being nauseous! You do this kind of thing all the time! I don't want to be a pilot! Again, aren't we just so lucky to know that his iron will and steely steadfast determination will see humanity through to its salvation? Service system connection, 80%. No errors detected. Compatibility, 90%. Commence connection. 